he's ready. He's ready. For he's gonna, he's gonna make like a surprise, like he's gonna jump like into the screen. <laughs> I woke up the WhatsApp. Just like jump over my laptop. We haven't even done the welcome, but he's going to probably include all of this as like a, a cold open. <laughs> anyway, hey, uh, welcome Fuse fam to uh, week two of this new kind of midweek format as we're all kind of watching these videos uh, online together and then talking with our uh, virtual small groups uh, afterward. Um, hopefully you were able to watch last week, follow along, um, check in with our daily Devos wanted to do kind of some introductions. Uh, we get started here. Uh, my name is Brad. For those of you who don't know, um, we have Matt. Hey, Matt, you want to you oh, say hey. hello? Didn't see you there. <laughs> so Matt's with us. Uh, we got Jaron um, as well. And then uh, we got two guests with us, uh, Courtney and her daughter, Macy, so we can give them a shout out. Thank you for joining us um, just to kind of get a few other perspectives. We're going to try to do things like this um, most weeks, just bring some other voices into the conversation. But uh, Matt, you want to take it away? I would be honored, Brad. Yeah. Well, so <laughs> glad you guys are joining us here virtually watching online. Like, subscribe, all the things, whatever. It's on. It'll be on YouTube. Yeah, so you can do that. A uh, few things. We are doing daily devos. We're putting those out on Instagram. And the Facebook, as Brad calls it, as well as uh, YouTube also. So we're going to be putting those out there for you if you guys want to follow along. There's a reading plan to go with that that you guys can hang in, hang with us for. And then also, Jerome is going to be getting out some Fuse News things. You guys have been begging for Fuse News stuff, and we heard you. We understand. We listened. We will be providing content for you. It'll be awesome. Uh, we're also starting a brand new series this week called Undefeated. Just talking about as we go up and approach Easter, um, the things that uh, Christ has defeated. So it's against these different things. So Brad's starting out tonight over separation, and then we have uh, death is coming on. We might have we have a special teacher for that, and then also and sin is defeated. So it's all these different um, sections and aspects that Christ defeated um, through His work on the cross as we go up to approach Easter. So that's our new series, and that's what I got for the welcome intro important information so i'm gonna send it up to jerome hello my name is jerome apparently still <laughs> that, that one, that's the most j name that you call me i think every time we do fuse news jerome not, Jeth not jethro Jethro. Jethro pops in every once in a while but jerome <laughs> is, is there mostly um yeah yeah i'm gonna sing a song today um we're gonna sing a little tune uh courtney mentioned a song uh that is near and dear to my heart and I grew up on it, listening to it, uh, hearing it around the campfire, all that kind of stuff. It's called Give Us Clean Hands. It just talks about us being a generation that seeks the face of God. Um, and as well, I will throw a link in the description on YouTube um, to a playlist that, we, that will have a little bit more songs for you to listen to. That way I'm not singing at you over a camera for the next 15 minutes. It's rather it's just one, one, one song. <laughs> Bend our knees, O oh, Spirit, come make us whole. We turn our eyes from evil things, O oh, Lord, we cast out our idols. So give us clean hands and give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands, oh God. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. And oh God, let us be a generation at sea. Seeks your face, O oh God of Jacob. O oh God, let us be a generation that seeks. That seeks your face, O oh God of Jacob. O 
Give us clean hands, give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands, give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. God, let us be a generation that seeks, seeks your face. Oh, God of Jacob, oh, God, let us be a generation that seeks, seeks your face. Oh, God of Jacob. We seek your face, O God of Jacob. Cool, cool. cool. Yeah, um, if you guys want to head on over to Midweek Music on my Spotify profile, there'll be some more songs to sing as well. Um, but uh, kicking it off to you, Brent. Yeah, and we'll make sure we, we share that on our, our Fuse Instagram as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jaron, thanks for thanks for uh, sharing that. I, I do think that in, um, you know, before we get into teaching fully, uh, yeah. you know, throughout Scripture, throughout the history of God's people, anytime you see his people scattered, um, he uses that as an opportunity to refine the body, to refine yeah. the community, um, to redirect focus on, you know, from all the things that we, I think, are find our focus on. Uh, Put on instead of him and uh, so I, don't know, I think that's that song is a uh, hopefully it's just a good prayer right yeah. for us in these, in these moments to use it uh use this time well um i know for me um it's it's been hard to do this like the working from home uh the just kind of having our uh my normal rhythms all disrupted has been really challenging but there's been so many kind of sweet just things as well like i've never spent more time with my kids on a consistent basis uh um, so anyway, hey, what's up, Sid? Sid siding. <laughs> Sid siding. Hashtag. Also, there's Willow at the feet. Trending. My desk. You guys see her? There she is, just sitting in the. <laughs> Matt, if you want to ever bring Willow into the office once we're actually back to work, like I have no problem with that. Dude, I did it Willow once. Man. It was awesome. I'll have to do it more. Yeah. yeah, we would tell uh tell Chad to bring his dog, but she was a little. <laughs> Chewy is amazing. <laughs> no, she's a little bigger when she's full grown because they're more lazy when they're full grown. Oh, they're more lazy. Okay, well, mm -hmm. so like right now she's. Kicking. Is that food you were talking about? Blueberry muffin. <laughs> I yeah. thought to be more lazy now that I'm full grown. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, let's uh, get into <laughs> our teaching. So, new series called Undefeated. Um, Basically, we're going to be looking at three different things that Jesus, um, what he does on the cross, uh, three things that he defeats. And so uh, this week, our bottom line, main point, big idea is that because of Jesus, separation is defeated. And when we started planning this series, talking about this series, um, we we had no idea that this whole like coronavirus quarantine thing was going to happen. And so I was just thinking how like ironic it is that we're talking about separation being defeated while we are separated from one another. So anyway, kind of cool um, to see how God works through things um, and situations to kind of I don't know, help refine our focus. But um, we're all feeling this on some level. Uh, right now, right? That's we are separated from one another. We are separated from friends. We are separated from school and activities and things that we love and do. And uh, wanted to kind of steal an illustration that Jaron used uh, a few days ago when we were talking about this kind of working remote and being separated uh, from one another for work. And he described it as uh, kind of like a long distance relationship. And in long distance relationships, uh, you are separated physically, right, from the a person that you care deeply about, and they can be really hard. I want to throw, you know, show of hands. Who, who, just in this thing, has been in a long distance relationship? All of us. Wow. <laughs> well, not Macy, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, they're not. They're not fun. I don't know. You guys want to chime in at all about? Uh, I don't know what. What sucks most about being in a long distance relationship? Hashtag Sid Sutting. Uh, we have to do all, all of our contact through the old FaceTime, you know? 
Yeah. I mean, for me, it was like that. I was yeah. I grew up in that era. So um, <laughs> it was just yeah. kind of like this. It was like, it was face to face interaction, but it was at the same time. I mean, it's very, it was personal still. It's just, it was just, it's just different, you know, it's different than person to person interaction. So. Yeah. And your schedules are so different. Like, yeah. You can be different time zones, all kinds of stuff. And so trying to meet up and have like intentional time can be brutal. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And even yeah. the face to face stuff you get feels so much less personal, I guess. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was weird. Yeah. So I, I was apparently in the Stone Age. Um, I, I was in a year long relationship, uh, long distance, um, pre cell phone. Okay. Um, pre Facebook, um, Facebook didn't even exist. Uh, and I was in a different time zone. Um, so there was, I think I only saw Chad twice in a 12 month period, like person to person. Gosh. So it was hold your breath, written letters, nice. <laughs> written letters. And, um, Pony Express? Is that yeah, right. And he, he would call me on a phone that was connected to a cord to a house. Um, and it was like 1030 my time at night and 930 his. And I was in college. So you're like talking to each other at the most worst part of the day when you're exhausted. And it might have been for like 20 minutes and it wasn't even every night. Um, so, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's really hard, right? When you're in a distance. regurgitating information. That's what it was. It was just you're regurgitating information. So I found no value in talking a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when Mal, when Mal and I, when we started dating, we were kind of at distance for the for a good chunk of the first probably five six months that we were together. And I just felt like every day it was just a almost like a data like a data report. Like, hey, here's what I did today. What did you do? Oh, that sounds pretty similar to yesterday. <laughs> but it's important that we still are talking and maintaining connection. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Well, anyway, that's that's kind of what we are in right now as a fused community. We are in a long distance mm -hmm. relationship with one another. And uh, that's not the design. That's not the plan. That's not the ideal. But there are different seasons when it's kind of necessary. And so, like, what does it look like for us in, the, in these moments to still uh, pursue things that help us establish connection? Um, but still kind of just acknowledge that, yeah, this whole thing kind of, kind of sucks in a way too. And anyway, I was just thinking about like the, the idea of separation. Um, like that word is not a fun word. It's a word that's just, it, it, it stinks, right? It's, it's not fun. It's not how we as people were designed uh, to be in relationship. And I don't know, as I was thinking about like separation and why, like it just, it's hard and it sucks. I was just thinking that like, there's actually some pretty profound like theological significance to the idea of, of being separated. Um, because in Genesis one and two, right? We see a, a God who creates a world and, and he fills that world with uh, humans and all of these, um, these things, these people, like they exist in relationship, right? There's a relationship between God and humans. There's a relationship that humans have with one another. There's a relationship that humans have with creation itself. Um, and there's a relationship that we individually have with our, with ourselves, you know? And um, in all of these relationships, we see connection, we see unity, we see that that these things are are good because God is a relational God, and He is He has created um, creation to model that and to enter into that relationship that that He has. And so um, there's harmony. Uh, but then we get to Genesis three. Um, this is a thing that we call the fall often. Um, not the fall like, you know, autumn with the leaves changing, the things that we all love. Like, no, what we have is this fall. And it's, it's actually this period of, of this moment of rebellion where Adam and Eve, who've been created uh, to live and exist in relationship with God and with one another, um, they, you know, God has designed this world to behave and to interact in specific ways. And when, um, when we follow uh, God's instructions and designs we see that we see flourishing we see that this creation and this mission and this plan it thrives but whenever we rebel against that when we choose our own desires when we choose um, to not pursue God when we choose to not pursue uh, our the responsibilities that we even have in this relationship we see it becomes kind of distorted um, it becomes broken and that's what happens in Genesis chapter 3 is Adam and Eve chose themselves instead of um, 
choosing God. They chose themselves individually rather than um, the relationship as God had designed it. And so that's the fall in Genesis 3. And so we see um, separation enters the world, right? God created everything to be connected, to be unified. Um, that's why we make such a big deal at Fuse about unity, right? Right? We're united together. Like those, that's an important uh, component of what it means to, to follow Jesus. Um, but we see that everything is fractured. We see that there's now separation. There's separation between God and uh, humans because God is is so holy. He is so other. He is so perfect. He is so good that he can't be in close proximity or close relationship with with things that are are sinful, things that are broken, people, right, who have chosen to turn their backs towards him. Um, we see separation between um, people. Right. If you think about your own relationships, if you do something that hurts someone else, um, there's kind of a fracture that happens uh, with with your relationship. And it's hard to be around one another. Right. And so instead of growing closer together, you see kind of a pulling apart and you see that with 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 humans. Right. In this um, there's a separation between um, humans and creation. Right. We see things like diseases enter the world. We see things um, like humans taking advantage of, of just these natural resources that God has blessed us and gifted us with. Um, but you also see uh, separation within ourselves as well, right? Before the fall, right? Adam and Eve, right? They, there was no such thing as insecurity. There was no such thing as self-doubt or, um, you know, telling yourself or believing lies about yourself. Like that just didn't exist. Stress wasn't a thing. And so um, separation is really powerful, um, but God, he, he's a loving God, and he still desires relationship. He still designed the world to, to work and operate and thrive uh, with, within parameters of unity and connection. And so what we see is, um, just like in your relationships, if you do something that hurts someone else, um, that causes division or causes separation, often you know one person has to go and pursue the other, right? One person has to do something that's going to help to restore that. And so... There's, uh, you know, you guys have seen me use this diagram before. I don't know if it's coming across, you know, backwards or forwards on the other screen, but there's a, right, like there is separation that that exists between God and between us. And, and like, because we're just human, because we're finite, because we're powerless, like we can't do anything to restore that relationship. And so God, he actually moves towards us. God, he crosses the line in a good way. Because he's still a God who desires relationship. He desires restoration and reconciliation. He desires um, to be connected to, one, to, to us. And so that's what the Bible essentially is from Genesis 3 on. It's the story of God moving towards his people. It's a story of God taking these things that separate um, us from him and kind of tearing them apart. And so in the Old Testament, we see him do this through uh, giving uh, rules and laws. We see him do this through the sacrificial system. Um, he does this, you know, with the tabernacle and the temple, uh, which really allows himself to come and to live among his people. Um, we've got a, a video, a YouTube video that we're going to link um, in the comments of this, that if you want to kind of learn more about the temple and what, and what God did uh, to really dwell among his people, um, you can check that out. It's like five minutes. It's, it's by the, uh, the the creators of the Bible project. Um, they do really good work. Um, so anyway, that's the Old Testament, but those are all just temporary things, right? Those are temporary uh, kind of uh, actions that that God takes to restore and to, to defeat separation. But like as his people, we need something that's permanent. And so that's what we see in Jesus, right? Jesus in the New Testament, uh, God himself, right? Crossing the line to the point of, of leaving heaven, coming to earth, dwelling among us, uh, fully being human, um, living life, dying on the cross uh, to, to do away with sin. And, and when sin is, is done away with, separation can be done away with as well. I want to read from uh, 1 Peter 2 and then Matthew 27. First uh, Peter 2 says, he himself, this is Jesus, he bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. That's what First Peter 2 says. And that's describing what Jesus has done and accomplished on the cross. And then in Matthew 27, this is kind of um, from the account of Jesus's death on the cross. 
And so Jesus had, was just about to die. And it says here, starting in verse 45, from noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In that moment, Jesus himself was feeling full separation uh, with, with God the Father, right? That's a relationship that's always been super tight, but in Jesus kind of walking among us, taking on our sin, right? There was a separation that he felt uh, with God. And verse 47 says, when some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with white vinegar, put it on a staff, offered it to Jesus to drink. And the rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. So even in that moment, there's like Jesus is, is dying. He's giving up, right? There's separation that he's now experiencing from creation and from the rest of humanity. And verse 51, at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. So in this moment, right, like they had the God's people, they had this temple and that's where God's presence uh, lived it, it dwelt and the relationship that God's people had with God because like sin was still a thing the separation was still a thing it had to be mediated by a priest and so you had God's presence that dwelt in a specific area of the temple and there was this huge thick curtain that divided where God uh, lived from where the people could come in and worship and offer sacrifices and so in this moment that Jesus died in a great act of symbolism the curtain itself was ripped from top to bottom like just just ripped showing that that separation that existed between god and every uh individual was no more god as a god who's relational as a god who desires relationship who desires connection who desires unity literally right destroyed the thing that caused uh, the, the, the physical and the proximity uh, separation between humans and him. And so um, anyway, with all of this, I've got some kind of points of application for us to kind of go through. Like, what does it look like for us? Like we live post Easter, right? We live, Jesus has already died on the cross. He has already um, been resurrected from the grave. He has put away this thing called sin that we all deal with. And we still deal with it because he hasn't come back mm -hmm. yet. He hasn't returned to make all things fully good. We're still feeling elements of this brokenness. Um, so anyway, a few points of application, some things that I want to kind of um, stick to. I'm going to ask for a little bit of input from my uh, my colleagues here um, for it. And then, um, yeah, I've just got a couple more points of encouragement to end with. And so uh, the first point, right, unity and community are important because so so separation between God and mankind is defeated. Right. That was kind of the big the big point in all of that is that in the work of Jesus in the cross, the separation that exists between God and mankind, like that's defeated. And so what does it look like for us to kind of step into that? Um, well, we pursue relationship with Jesus, you know, like relationships don't usually work out too well when they're just one sided. Um, I don't know if any of you have been in a relationship like that, but if a relationship is one sided, like it's not going to work super well. And so as um as, as God's people, right? If separation between us and him is, is no more, like, well, we have this responsibility to pursue that relationship and to lean into it. So I don't know if any of you guys want to add anything there. Um, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, I heard this this week and I really liked it. I thought it explained things good that God is always near us, but it's through like prayer and meditation that we're aware that he's mm -hmm. near us. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I love that. Cause you can be like, God's near, God's near, God's near. And they're like, I can't feel it. But I was just like, I love that. It kind of makes you be like, wait a minute. I, I have to take some responsibility in slowing myself mm -hmm. down, allowing prayer and meditation, and then I'll feel God's presence. Yeah. yeah and that's really good. Off that, what Courtney said, like so many people are looking for new stuff now. Like everyone's looking to try to get new things, learn new skills, do different things, find more things. And like, we have all that we need, you know, like we have prayer, we have meditation, we have things we don't do. And like, maybe this is just a time for us to settle down and like enjoy this relationship. I'm not saying God sent the Corona so that people would pray more. That's not what I'm saying. But maybe this is an opportunity for us to like, I don't know, pray or meditate or take this time, like instead of looking for more new things, like actually the things that we've already been given. Mm -hmm. 
That's good. Jaren, what, what about you? Is there anything that you found to be particularly helpful, beneficial for you as you kind of pursue or lean into relationship with God? Yeah, I mean, I think maybe a bit of an obvious one is music. I mean, that that, that really draws me in and, and, and kind of teaches me his story in quite a way that I think I, I haven't been able to find with my, the way my mind works, the way my heart works and everything like that mm-hmm. connects with, with a lot of other things. So um, just staying in scripture and then writing about what I what I hear in scripture, writing about um, what I hear in my life, just like thinking and pondering and doing it in such a musical musical way. Um, it, it's a good connection for me. So hmm. That's awesome. Well, cool. Uh, the, the second point of application or whatever, I, I think, is that separation between humans is defeated. Mm-hmm. Right. So like we talked about that at the beginning that, um, you know, before Genesis three, before the fall. Right. Like there was like people existed in relationship with one another and those relationships were good. There was no, you know, doubting in you know, the other. There was full trust. There wasn't insecurity like relationships were good. Yeah. Um, and so and, and I, I do think, though, that because we still live in a broken world, we still live in a world where, um, right, we are going to hurt other people. Right. Because we are all are still like feeling the weight of that. Um, but as a church body, as a community of believers who have put their faith in Jesus, who God is at work to redeem, to restore and to rescue. Right. We we really need to do everything we can to move towards other people. Right. So in moments whenever either we hurt someone or they hurt us. Um, I don't know. I think that's why forgiveness is so important. That's why um, offering benefit of the doubt. That's why trusting um, that other people have good intentions. Like those are, are really good things to do. And it's really hard in this season because of the whole, you know, being separated from everybody. Um, what does it look like to have good relationships with with each other? Um, it, it's really difficult because I think that these these phone things are one of the like they're great. Oh, wow. I've got a lot of notifications uh, They're They're great. But at the same time, like how often do we use these things to to hurt other people instead? Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of this weird season that we're in because these are our really are some of our only resources to connect with other um, people. Macy, I wanted to ask you, what does it look like for you? Like, I mean, it's only been a it's been a what a week, week and a half. Like, I don't know. Have you found it's you've been able to connect with with friends? Um, or yeah, what's that been like? Um. So. Okay, so with my Fuse group, it's like we're all doing something different. So we don't, can't really find a way to connect. So I haven't, I mean, I've talked to them like on Instagram or something. Yeah. Like other than that, we haven't really like, like FaceTimed or like really like connected. Yeah. It kind of made me feel like it's weird. Like I thought that since the corona we would be able to like connect more but it's actually like making us drift apart yeah well i think that speaks to how important being actually physically together Mm -hmm. you know that it is you know that's important part of relationships um so i guess my encouragement would be like hey while we're all separated we probably need to do as much as we can and go over the top to try to connect with other people right Mm -hmm. sending people texts that might feel awkward or or feel weird like oh i'm gonna thinking about this person so i'm gonna let them know right but that's probably powerful when it comes to relationships moving forward Mm -hmm. um Third thing I wanted to say is that like the separation that we feel internally is defeated, right? So, so we, as people, as I kind of mentioned in the beginning, like one of the relationships that where we feel the most separation is the relationship with ourself. And so um, Macy, I wanted to ask you, you know, again, like in this season, have you felt, you know, it's, I know it's, I know it's only been like a week and a half, but right. Like one of the things that the teenagers, um, you know, say they feel a lot is, is stressed out. Right. And that's, that's definitely something that, that we uh, experience that's a result of, of the fall. But I don't know, like for you, what, what has been this whole staying at home? Like what effect has that had? Do you feel like on just your relationship with yourself? Okay. So I've noticed like every day when I come home from school, there's always this like pressure like to impress my teachers or like my friends expect something from me that I don't understand. And so when I came home, I would like freak 
out on everybody. <laughs> I would yell at everybody because they would like get on my nerves. So I would just spend the whole time in my room. And yeah. so by not having school and like being isolated from everybody has like, it's affected me like deeply, like to get connected with my family since, mm -hmm. like, since school started, I've been like so stressed out. So I've gotten to spend time more, peace, yeah. more, yeah, more with my siblings and like my mom and my dad. Mm -hmm. And so like my stress level and my anxiety level, which I have a lot of anxiety, it has gone like down like a lot. Mm -hmm. And since I don't have that pressure to like, like um, impress my teachers like all the time, it just kind of, it's, like a relief that I can just spend time with my family and I don't have to worry about anything. That's awesome. Yeah. That kind of speaks to, I think, you know, I've, I'm kind of separating all of these separate, huh? I'm mm -hmm. kind of separating all of these components, right? These relationships, God and, and humans, God, you know, humans and humans, humans and their selves, humans in the world. But like, mm -hmm. I think the way that all of this is designed to work is that all of these relationships happen. It's like simultaneously together. And so like, there's just so many different levels where even what you were just sharing there, like a lot of the stress and the things that you feel internally come from your environment and the situations that you're in and the relationships that you have and the people who are in your life. And then that has an effect on you internally. And so, I don't know, perhaps this whole season for all of us can be a season where, I don't know, we kind of get back to life as maybe God's designed it to be, where we have space to process things and to have conversations with ourselves, but then also conversations with family members, the people who are in our lives that are supposed to love us the most, right? And, and know us the best. And um, I don't know, and, and be almost removed from a lot of the pressures and the social things that we experience on a daily basis. So that's, um, that's, that's really good. Uh, the last thing that we have is, right, separation um, between us as humans and creation itself is, is defeated. And like right now, we're, we're again in this moment where Jesus hasn't returned yet to ultimately make all things new. We're still in a world that that groans to be made right. We're still in an earth, right, where we're, we're, we're seeing, I mean, we're seeing the effects of that with this disease of of the, the coronavirus, COVID-19, right? Like that's something that's, it, that's not the way it's supposed to be. And so one of the things that we even can do right now to help kind of destroy and, and to lean into the way that Jesus is defeating death is to do everything we can, right? To help it not spread further. That's why we're doing this quarantine thing. Um, so I, I don't know, it might be weird to think of this whole experience as like a, a spiritual one, but like us washing our hands, right? Us uh, self, uh, self, you know, social distancing and self isolating and all of these things we're we're leaning into what God is doing to try to kind of bring restoration, um, to this world and in, in these, in this moment. And, and ultimately what all of this should do, it's kind of like my, my final encouragement before we get to a real specific, um, kind of application in a minute, what all of this thing, what it should do is, is it shouldn't, we should long, right. For, the the unity that we read about in genesis 1 and 2 to return right we should long for god through jesus to make all things new and all things right we should realize that this world the way it currently is is not the way it's supposed to be and and ultimately it's not where where um, everything is heading and yet everything in our lives i think is built to you know, to worship comfort and to be in the moment, all of these things. And so um, anyway, the last thing I wanted to do is kind of bring this back to our Fuse community. Uh, we are uh, physically separated from one another. And so kind of in, in the moment, like, you know, for the next however many weeks we're doing this, what can we do uh, to kind of remain connected? Um, because just, you know, we're in a long distance relationship and that's not the plan. That's not how it's supposed to be. Um, but just because we're separated doesn't mean that connection uh, can't still happen. And so um, I wanted to return, you know, Courtney and I, we were chatting mm -hmm. about uh, your distance relationship with Chad. One of the things that you had mentioned was that uh, you, you guys knew that it was going to be a distance thing. Mm -hmm. And so there were things that you guys did um, to just intentionally connect or kind of move towards one another, even yeah. when you weren't physically. Together. So anyway, if you could just share maybe a little bit more of the more about that. Yeah, I think. Um one of the things I kind of told myself then and I'm kind of telling myself now is what can I be available in that present moment with how my circumstances were that um, I can be inside of 
that I otherwise wouldn't be. So um, we knew that Chad and I couldn't make memories together in person. We couldn't exercise or study together or babysit together. Um, so we had to be intentional on scheduling a time when we could talk. Um, I think part, I mean, I think everyone is going to have to grieve. We won't be able to make memories and time is going to be limited. Um, but schedule when you can connect. Um, but then also with your, um, I had space to do well, that that time meant something different for me. Like I needed to I was taking like 23 credit hours in school mm -hmm. and I was like, I need I need this time for me. I, I was like, I couldn't even have chat here in person because he would have distracted me. <laughs> like so there's um, just trusting the time like you're not going to see your friends as much. Be intentional to connect with them. But what can you be inside of right now? Um that you can maybe you need to connect with yourself um spending time in prayer to know that god is there um yeah so scheduling scheduling in a different way and then i think also which is i think we don't really like value in the western world is um you're still connected distance has nothing to do with being separated mm -hmm. um when i was in the campus i would have memories of chad and i and so i felt like he was with me wherever we went and i knew i knew why we were doing what we were doing and i knew we were going to be reunited in the future and so it's like right now is have those memories in your heart and savor them remember them and know that they're still with you even though some people need to hear you're still with everyone and everyone's still with you and we're all in this together. It just looks a little bit different. So mm -hmm. hold that in your heart and, um, you know, not to be mad at everyone that you can't see them, <laughs> but hold that in your heart and know that you will reconnect flesh to flesh soon. But um, there's something inside of this moment that we don't want to miss and we mm -hmm. really take advantage of. Yeah. Yeah. Like God is still up to something. He's still working. He still has a, there's ways that he is, he is still working to bring us closer together, even though we're, we're physically apart. Um, and that's something too, like these relationships they they don't just exist in this moment. They exist a month from now and a year from now. And so are there things that we can do individually while we are apart right now, even to do relationship better, even in the future? Yeah. Um, like maybe we're separated from ourselves. And this will help us be closer to ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. Um, well, cool. I have just two more last encouragements and then we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up. First is this, this season is temporary, right? We will gather to get uh, together again. We will be back together. We will uh, be together singing songs um, in person. And so uh, we look forward to that. And the second thing is that the separation between us and God, right, it's already been destroyed. So, you know, use this season. We, we've said this a lot you know, over the course of the last um, however many minutes this has been. We've used this season, right, to lean into uh, your relationship with Jesus. Um, so whether that's um, scripture reading, um, you can follow along with this series on the YouVersion app. Uh, just search plans, uh, type in undefe um, undefeated, and you'll be able to uh, find that. You know, watch the Devo videos that we make, um, pray, right? Spend time listening to God, spend time just singing and or reflecting on songs that we'll post. Um, and so anyway, take advantage of this season. All right, that being said, Matt, if you'll close us out and we'll uh, hopefully you guys have some good uh, time with your groups. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's do the the pray thing, right? So we acknowledge that like praying at a distance is weird, but like, that's okay. You know? And so maybe this is just encouragement to you that like you can help, uh, not help, but you can join in into prayer with us. So let's go ahead and pray. Dear God, thank you just for the opportunity you've provided in this weird time in this pandemic esque thing that we are just confused and uncertain. And there's a lot of fear about God. I just pray that you would, um, Give us a, a sense of calmness. Give us uh, peace as we um, pursue you. God, I just pray this would be an opportunity for us to know you better, that we would use this time of like in the wilderness almost to come to know you, to come and uh, pursue you as our Father, and that we would also have this time to be intentional to reach out, not 
physically and face to face to reach out to those who are in our small groups or friends that we care for deeply. So Lord, we love you. We trust you always, especially in this time. So in your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us in the recording.